Marvel President Kevin Feige. To what do I owe the visit, Kevin? Steven, I'm not gonna mince words. The Multiverse of Madness numbers are not what we were expecting. I need you to make everyone forget that they saw it so that they'll go and see it again. Now, Kevin, the movie might be a bit messy, but I'm sure that you can learn from this experience and do better next time. All right, smart guy, answer me this. What's easier, making everyone forget they saw the movie or making fans happy? Right. So, are we talking domestic or global? Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. While Multiverse of Madness might be polarizing some fans, it's still a wonderful opportunity to spotlight Doctor Strange. Today, we're going to take a look at the Walmart-exclusive Marvel Legends Deluxe version, along with a really cool third-party portal. Starting off the packaging, and wow, they really packed a lot into this box. It's almost like magic! Doctor Strange logo down here, Doctor Strange basketball up top, barcode for anyone who thinks they'll actually find this in a Walmart, and a picture and right up on the back. Stephen Strange was a brilliant surgeon before an accident ruined his hands. Now, he defends our reality from supernatural threats as Earth's Sorcerer Supreme. They could have sprung for the extra-wide deluxe box considering that this is pretty much a deluxe release, but they didn't. And you know what? That is completely fine. For packaging, I'm giving Doctor Strange one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and Doctor Strange stands at six and a quarter inches. At first blush, this is a very impressive sculpt, but it does hide some very clever reuse. The arms, for example, came from Kang, and the legs and feet come from Sunfire. This, of course, is the PS4 Spiny, but it's the same body. Otherwise, we have a completely new tunic. The wing shape in the middle could definitely use to be a bit brighter. Nice long ribbony belt, polka dotted gloves, eye of Agamotto, and cloak. It's definitely a more rigid plastic. That's to accommodate the yellow paintwork, and unfortunately, it's not removable. Or fortunately, depending on your point of view. Of course, the most striking part is the head sculpt. Iron Man looks like Charles Bronson, Arcade looks like Dexter, and Scarlet Witch looks like Alexandra Daddario. But if this is based on a specific actor, I honestly cannot place it. Comic book Doctor Strange was originally modeled off of Vincent Price, and that's definitely an action figure I would have liked to have seen. Either way, this head sculpt is pretty impressive. He's got his grayed out temples, the mustache, and all all the details have been nicely stamped on. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I don't mind reuse if it makes sense. And in this case, it absolutely does. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that there are enough new pieces to trick you into thinking it's an all new sculpt. For presentation, I'm giving Doctor Strange one whole point. Moving on to posability, and Steven has some things working against him. From the top and his head's on a ball joint and a disc hinge, he can't really look up because of the high collar, but he can look down just fine. Pretty decent tilt, and all the way around. He's got swivel hinge shoulders that raise up 90 degrees, no bicep swivel even though you can see the cut where there was one, single jointed swivel elbows, and swivel hinge wrists. <laughs> Shifting to the torso when he has an ab crunch, he can hunch over with no trouble, but thanks to the cloak and he can't really arch back. Moving on down, he has a swivel waist, and below the waist he has this skirt that gets in the way. There is a slot on this side to help out, and I have seen online where some people have cut one over here. As is, he can kick this far, and split this far. That said, he does have thigh cut, double jointed knees, again kind of impeded by the cloak, boot cut, and ankles that hinge, and pivot. If this figure had one area of opportunity, it would definitely be articulation. Had they gone with Red Skull's arms instead of Kang's, we would have at least gotten bicep swivel and double jointed elbows. Otherwise, the articulation we do get is understandably hindered by the cloak and skirt. For posability, I'm giving Doctor Strange half a point. Moving on to playability, and Doctor Strange is loaded. In addition to his regular head, he also has a sleepy time one. Interestingly enough, his hair is actually different from head to head. He also comes with an astral head, which is just clever reuse of the Silver Surfer. But wait, there's more! In addition to his Italian hands, Doctor Strange also comes with a fist and a weapon holding hand. I don't know where it came from, but if you look closely, you can actually see fingernails. And why does he have a weapon holding hand? To hold this battle axe, of course. Zooming on in, we can see some nice texture and paint wash. Same with the handle, and he holds it like so. Not only that, but Doctor Strange also comes with this scepter. In addition to the sculpted detail, we can also see some paint, and it fits in his hand with no trouble. And if all of that wasn't enough, he also comes with these energy effects. 
We've seen them a lot, but they're always appreciated. For some extra razzle-dazzle, you can use the Retro Card Electro Hands. You can also use this book. This one came with the Hellfire Club, but you can also get it with the Retro Card Beast. Of course, the real accessory I want to talk about is this portal. This portal was made by eBay user Dark Ball Avenger. As of this recording, he doesn't have any for sale, but I will include a link in the description below. It's a 3D print, so if you look closely, you can see that texture, but sitting on your shelf, and you will never notice. The two things I appreciate most is that it's a translucent plastic. Because of that, rear lighting makes a glow. And I also appreciate that the base is this simple lip. As you can see, it stands up all on its own without any trouble. And you can even flip it around to hide the base completely. Just note that there's no detail on this side. With shipping, it costs $20, but he did have a discount if you bought more than one. For those who are curious, it stands at 7 and 3 quarter inches, but the hole has a diameter of 6. As you can see, it's more than enough room for a typical Marvel Legend. That said, it's a bit tight for a Marvel Select, but you can absolutely make it work. But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. For some strange specific comparisons, here he is with the very first one. It was made in 1996 by Toy Biz and was part of the Spider-Man series. As you can see, I'm missing his straps. I'm also missing the Toy Biz Legends. But moving on to the movies, and here we have No Way Home. And here we have Multiverse of Madness. Since I know you like it, here's a head swap with No Way Home. Stylistically, it doesn't match, but it does still look kind of cool. Same thing with the comic head on the movie body. I am surprised at how well the skin tones match. They don't match as well in Multiverse of Madness, but it's still passable. To be honest, this might work as a more modern comic comic version. Conversely, here's the Multiverse of Madness head on the comic book body. If you're gonna do it, I think that this one might be a bit too small, and that No Way Home is a better fit. For some comic comparisons, and here's the 20th anniversary Captain America, and here's a Charles Bronson Iron Man. If you're curious how that one looks, here you go. Personally, I don't think it's much of an improvement. That said, this is kind of cool. All you have to do is darken the temples. For some Defenders comparisons, here he is with a Silver Surfer, here he is with the Incredible Hulk, this is the 80 Years version, and here he is with Name more the Submariner. This segues perfectly to the Illuminati. In addition to Namor, we have Reed Richards, the smartest man alive. We also have Professor Xavier and Iron Man. This one is the movie version Mark III, which I use for my comic book Extremis. Black Bolt should also be here, but I unfortunately do not have him. That said, for Multiverse of Madness connection, and here he is with Captain Carter. Of course, while we're on the subject of Multiverse of Madness, here he is with the Scarlet Witch. But for a fellow tunic enthusiast with magic powers, here he is with Doctor Doom. For his greatest adversary, here he is with Dormammu, this is a side-by-side -side I've been waiting for since I did that review and didn't even know that this Doctor Strange was coming. For a relative scale comparison, here he is with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. So, hey, could you magic me back my legs? Vwum. Oh, my stars and garters. My legs are back. I'm healed. Vroom. Aw, oh, nuts. With three heads, four hands, two weapons, and two energy effects, if this isn't the most accessories to ever come with a Marvel Legend, it's got to at least be in the running. And considering all the different displays you can put them in, this Doctor Strange is a must-have for any Marvel collection. For playability, I'm giving Doctor Strange one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Doctor Strange is a Walmart exclusive and retails for $27. Considering a regular Marvel Legend now goes for $25 and doesn't come with nearly this much, I'd say that this sorcerer is supreme. For price, I'm giving Doctor Strange one whole point for a grand total of 4.5 out of 5. For more Doctor Strange, check out this Versus, or check out this video on Dormammu. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.